the power of an influencing presence. He said, For I was hungered, and he gave me meat. Just follow my scripture, don't worry. I was hungered, and he gave me meat. I want to see two things in the scripture. I'll read just two verses, and that will be the anchor scripture for our sermon. I want us to see, we are students. In every verse we'll read, we'll see two things that are prominent. We'll see a problem and a solution. He said, I was hungered and you gave me meat. So the provision or the solution for hung, hunger was meat. Meat simply means food in scripture anyway. Is that okay? He said, I was thirsty and you gave me drink. So the solution for thirst is what? A drink, a liquid. Yes. As I was a stranger and you took me. Naked and you clothed me. So the solution for nakedness is what? The next phrase is our anchor scripture. I was and he visited me. I was in prison. You came unto me. Now you see why we read through the scripture we got to this last phrase and it became a confusion because the solution for a man in prison was to be freedom do you understand that but now we're seeing a, a, a swap or a change in the statements we've been reading how come suddenly that the solution for being in prison is that a man visits do you understand that so it simply means that's the topic the power of what an influencing presence a presence that equivalent to freedom men who carries a dimension of god and when they come in the midst of the trying situation there is calm and peace because of what the influence of the presence this was what happened in acts i think chapter 16 while paul and silas was in prison and the Bible says that they prayed and sang and suddenly there appeared to them an angel. The Bible says when they came to the gates of the city, they didn't need a key or, a, or, or whatever kind of code or a supernatural implication there. The gate opened to them on its own accord. Why? The power of a prince. Do we understand what I'm saying? Listen, you for you to grow in your knowledge you must be a custodian of knowledge if you want to amount to anything in God you must be a custodian of knowledge three kinds of knowledge you must be a custodian of number one the knowledge of God then you graduate to number two the knowledge of his ways then finally you graduate to the knowledge of his power do we understand that you have the knowledge of God the knowledge of his ways and the knowledge of what his power so we have many people that have the, the tangible presence of God on their life but not in a manifesting degree there are many of God if we, if we begin to check now we find out that many of us have been filled with the Holy Ghost is that not so? we have the spirit in us but the problem there is that we don't have it in a manifesting dimension we don't have the influencing dimension of that spirit do we understand that so we are carrying the holy ghost with us everywhere but looking like he's lying too much in the inside of us so what i came to talk about is not just having the holy ghost in the inside of you but the manifesting and influencing dimensions of the holy ghost see there is a kind of presence that will rest on you it will bless everyone around you do we understand that? That was what Jacob carried the lab and said, I know by experience that the Lord God has blessed me because of you. There are men whose friends come and because that is to speak to you because of the influence of their presence. For some of the Bible tells us, I think 23 and 24, the Bible tells us how that the prophet, the king Saul was after David's life. And the men ran to Samuel. And when they came just kilometers away to the presence of Samuel, the Bible said they began to prophesy. Influencing presence. And that's what the believers see. Listen, we have cultured. God said this to me some few years ago. He said, Son, you have cultured men enough. Start culturing atmospheres. 
that's why you see people come to church they carry so much of a zeal they hear the word of god they get to their rooms and they didn't understand that they've been cultured but their atmosphere is not cultured so they still struggle to pray they wonder the zeal to which i came out of service how comes i'm at home now it looks like everything was just a waste and when we don't begin to address these things it brings insults to christianity do we understand that there is a dimension of presence you carry that makes your words powerful no one should meet you and go depressed do we understand that this is a dimension of presence that makes your word comes out with power it's the influence of the presence on those words especially if you are called if you are a preacher you need that as you just be a lecturer and entertainer there must be that influence of the presence that when you stand to speak there is something beyond what you are saying that happens to men Ezekiel 2 and verse 2 give me that scripture he said and he spake unto me and while he did that the spirit what entered into me and set me on my feet just by the speakings of the word but behind those words was the influence of what a presence I read the story of grace woman of God Kathy Walter she broke into a dimension of the spirit that she, she we call it the resurrection power nothing dies around her a chicken died she bought a chicken to eat before the date, date of slaughter the chicken died she called it back to life a cat died she summoned the cat back to life why she broke into a dimension of an information which I'm sharing to you called the resurrection power such that she tells herself nothing dies around me now you see the mirrors of testimony how you put your hands on that same phone and you see by that angels are mobilized that a spiritual protocol and principle has been activated angels are mobilized to begin to touch the hearts of men we call it the divine compulsion of the spirit men where they are under pressure to say let me make a call let me do this for this person now the bible says and jacob said anything that happened in that prison with the bottle and the baker he was them. do you understand that that nothing happened in that prison without him doing it so it simply means that even the dreams the baker and butler had jacob gave it to them or joseph rather gave it to them he made them have those dreams and by that influence that presence because joseph was a dreamer suddenly when the people stayed around him they begin to break into the encounter listen should i show you a principle bring the holy ghost one minute we've come to draw 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 we've drawn from you again yeah. now listen do you know that all joseph was doing was intentional because a man had understanding of the influence see listen you must get to a point i told you let your christianity be full of results you must get to a point where your christianity is intentional you don't do things by a mistake you don't see certain things and say i didn't know how they happen no you have so much of knowledge in the operations of god that you can make them happen that's what we call mastery mastery is the ability to produce supernatural results with much ease and with much speed over and over again consistently are we following are we together so the bible says that joseph made that encounter to take place and you see by that initiation the deposits of dreams rested upon the butler and the baker follow me now when the butler by his interpretation was restored do we understand that and he takes the wine every day gets into pharaoh and put is it pharaoh now pharaoh by the influence of the butler's own presence which he got from joseph suddenly pharaoh himself began to have dreams are you following me that was the only way of prison he confidence that's why he told the man that when you get there remember me. the power of an influencing that's why the bible says, i came to give you life and life in what abundance that's life beyond the one you need 
why is it in abundance why didn't they give us the requisite life ourselves so that it's from the overflow of your life that you cause things to happen you spread those life to things around you environment and cities around you do you understand that please are we following are we getting blessed this morning tell your neighbor you don't know who you are so people can come to you for counseling and just a statement to them it, be, it goes beyond words it comes with an influencing presence they have no option what you said do we understand that and appreciate that the holy ghost is not just to be no. the influence of his presence is to be radiating around you we've not been taught so many things in the body of christ give me first john 5 and verse 4 he said whatsoever is born of god overcome the world and this is the victory which overcome the world even what our faith leave the rest stories let me stay with just one statement and preach it for like 10 minutes whatsoever is what born of god listen so it simply means that christians have been taught what it is for them to be born again but they didn't understand that even their business and academics need to also be born again how many of you have heard of um, Heidi Baker you've read her story how she understands what I'm saying to you now she will go to, she stays in Mozambique she goes to the, after the field where she they plants and she will speak to the ground I read the supernatural power of God upon this ground. Grow beyond normal. Go beyond the course of nature. And what they were verse for nine months, they were verse for four months in multiple folds. Whatever is born of God is what the natural course of the earth cannot hold. So you came in the semester. Was your academies born of God? Or everything you operated by your academies was from the natural point of view i'll read like this i'll do like this some of you you are born again but your your other aspect of your even your house is not born again because if your house is born again they shouldn't be entering there to press you it's beyond you it's the influence of a presence a great man of god called david azok one of the person that initiated me into the gold dust experience he broke into a dimension of the supernatural one kilometer, not one, one mile radius from wherever he is, cancer cannot survive. One mile. Do you understand what I'm saying? One what? Mile. So when he comes into a city, basically I think he resides in Pescola. When he comes to a city, the people begin to carry cancer patients to throw one mile from where he is. Once the cancer patient gets to it, they are not seeing him. Just that they are one mile close to where he is, the cancer dies. What the power of an influencing presence listen there is three dimension of the glory of God we have our body our soul and our spirit right the body speaks of the outer court the soul speaks of the inner court and the spirit speaks of the holies of holies in the inner court what matters there the seven lamps seven candlesticks which speaks about the giftings and the operations of the Holy Spirit so when you get into that dimension of God, you now begin to operate by the giftings. Yes, there are men who operate that way. They need the gifts to be operational and functional on them to minister. Then you get to the final dimension, which is the holies of holies. At that level, what matters is what the glory, the influence of a presence. So therefore, we can conclude that the glory of God is in three major dimensions. I'll show you. Give me 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. Number one is the inside. There is the glory in you. There is the glory on you and then there is the glory around you the glory in the inside of you can be resident there the glory on you simply means there must be the operation of a physical touch you must lay hands on the sick you must make a contact with people for that glory to radiate in them then there is the one called the glory around he said but we have this treasure in 18 verses that the excellency of the power may be of god and not of us did you see that that's why the bible calls us what fragrance of christ you understand what a fragrance is it goes beyond the person that is sprayed on it begins to affect even what the atmosphere that's the dimension of god that will shake this nation 
that's the dimension of God that will shake such that you sit with a witch in a car and she loses the ability to be a witch how comes you sit with someone with a charm in the exam hall and your brain is going blank why can't you sit that same way and exert the dominion of your presence do we understand that but you don't know who you are have you not seen what the bible says that every man of God carries in himself what we call a peace so that God told them that when you get into any house tell them my peace I live here that I stepped into that place it shouldn't be normal again by the function of the fact that they received me so listen you know when we, we've thought being born again the church taught us being born again in one dimension that it simply means to accept Christ. There is a dimension of being born again that means you accept certain kind of people. He said that if you receive, if they receive you, they receive him that sent you. But if they despise, he said it will be tolerable for Solomon and Gomorrah than for that city. So there are cities that reject certain men and God leaves them. Do we understand what I'm saying? Pray in the Holy Ghost one minute. of an influencing presence in Jesus name we pray now I read the story of great servant of God Lestra Somra who was anointed with tears by sweets with this word there was a city every a man of God kept praying in that city because every night the demonic cloud would take over that city and if that man of God don't pray, there will be serious chaos in that city. So he kept interceding every night. He needs to stay awake to be praying. And one of the days, Lestra Somra went into that city without the awareness of anybody or even the man. And that day, unfortunately, the man forgot to pray and slept off, thinking he would be able to wake up to pray. While he woke up in the morning, he found out, ah, everywhere seems calm. He sees all the devils are out of this city. And he asked God, he said, Lord, what happened? Today of all day that I refuse to pray, I'm teaching you what will make you understand certain things around your life. That you feel like you are not doing much, but you are seeing more results. It might be by the influence of the presence of another. Do we understand that? That's what men will understand when Paul will now say that you are partakers of my grace. I'm making you understand how you need to just don't carry the Holy Ghost idly but to carry the influence part of his presence so that it begins to affect everything around you. And God said to that man, he said, no, my servant Lester Summer was in town and didn't know there was an issue but that his presence entered into a city. He was checked out. One time I was walking in front of my son and he said, mm -hmm. Papa, I smell demonic presence. I said, I can't smell nothing. I can't see them. And he was confused because he felt that the father he follows should have a higher thermometer than him. And I laughed. Is it possible for a metal detector to detect plastic? I am not seeing it. There are those who see, there are those who see what demons are wrong. It depends on the level. There are things you celebrate. Many don't, don't celebrate that. It's a lower level of life. Why would wait for me to say once I appear they disappear because we can't stay together do we understand that the tangibility is presence the tangibility of his presence the tangibility of his presence pray this prayer and say Lord let your presence radiate around my life In Jesus' name we pray. 1044. An example of certain people that had this tangibility. Peter. The Bible says, and as Peter spake, the Holy Ghost fell. As he spake, as he spake, the Holy Ghost fell. Luke 24, 32. Jesus. They said to themselves, Didn't our heart burn with fire when this man was talking? Can it be like that for you from today? Lift up your hands. 
I told you it's an ordination service to release graces and giftings to men. If you desire that influence in presence, you will receive it now. If you desire it, did it our heart burn with fire? He said, I will give you a kind of word that no man can resist. You talk, they have no option but to say, Okay, as you said so. Kapati kato salatash. Kaperido sahafiri de hasei de kahantash. I pray for that release of that influencing presence that backs the words of a man. That release of that influencing presence in the name of Jesus. Now, how do you carry and maintain, or how do you carry and sustain an influencing presence? You have the Holy Ghost. You so how do you bring that operations? to an influencing level see listen 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 i don't want you know if you followed me for a while you know my passion in the christian faith my passion in the christian faith is to see transformational christianity christianity with proofs not just in the aspect of the demonstration of power or healings or miracle but everything about your life shows that you are a believer it shows the involvement of god it shows you are not a normal person do we understand that? You should see things before it happens. You should be able to hear things others cannot hear. You should be able to come up with strategic solutions, creativity, wisdom. Have you not heard of Bahazel? Yeah, the Bible says, I've filled him with the spirit of wisdom and creativity to come up with inventions, creative ideas. That's the Holy Ghost, not that we're just shouting there's an Holy Ghost somewhere. It should be produ productive in our lives. Do we understand that? It should be productive. I should get... See, listen, listen, listen. I have never, for the past 20 years of my life, entered into a place and covered it with the blood of Jesus. Have you not? So I am the presence of God. I am His heart most fair. Anywhere I enter, Jesus Christ is seen. Are you entertaining yourself? Do you understand the meaning of what you are singing? Listen, one of the things that must drop on you from your Christian faith is being conscious of realities. Not just having a head knowledge of it, but being conscious as you walk every day. Do we understand that? Being conscious of it with absolute faith and confidence. Faith that is based on two things. Now let me teach you something on that. There are two ways you base your faith. It will produce any result. Number one, when your faith is based on the word of God. And number two, where your faith is based on his mercies. Because if that second part is absent, by the time you finish maybe shouting enough for somebody now, you can't do anything again. Do you understand that? Because you have not complained. That's what the Bible talks about those who are babes. He said because they are not skillful in the doctrines of righteousness. They don't understand how it works. From today, anywhere you enter, be conscious of it. Look at what Jesus will say to his disciples. <laughs> Our friend sleepeth. Come, let's go what? Wake him up. That's how it should be for you. The consciousness you should carry. When they call you that somebody you know is not feeling fine. You say, let's go. Ah, the man that knows that sliver or gold, I have none. But there is something in the inside of me called the Holy Ghost. We understand that I don't have silver, I don't have gold, but I have this. Learn to bring the super upon your natural. Do you understand that? You, you know, one thing I challenged God while in the campus was that it's quite possible for me to fail or to have a lower grade. See, I don't mind. You know, some of you, like, you know, for men growing up from primary, secondary school, we had a from young men, they don't like it when ladies beat them in class. I too was like that, but from tertiary level. A Muslim in class. It was a vow. I felt. That's why I say challenge yourself. How will it happen? What is now the function of this Holy Ghost? Called the Spirit of truth. You settle too much for less. That's why you are not seeing the operations of God's power around your life. 
what is now this Holy Ghost all about? That's why many are getting tired of church. I came to introduce you to the God you read about in your Bible. That's what he said to me a few weeks ago. He said, son, I am sending you a message. Go show my people the God they are reading about in the Bible. Go show them. That's why I'm happy that I'm not doing anything special for you. Are you not hearing people say they place their own hands on their phone and say money come and it came? I didn't place my hands there. That's the joy of Christianity. That we can see other people duplicating the same results. People will respect us when they see the operations of God. The Bible says when they saw the death of Ananias and Sapphira, fear came on the people. Fear what? Came on the people. They will respect our God. The church will be feared again. The church will be feared. I told my children, I said, anyone that dares it, that's here to steal. They will wait for me till I come. I don't know. Let me, let it happen that they stole comfortably and go. And see the way I will hold the horns of this altar and say, Where is my God? God, I'll just say, Oh, they stole. Okay, no problem. Let's buy the other padlock. It's all right. They will it like that. They continue our Christian faith like that. No, now. We can't grow like that without asking questions and looking for answers. And say, Lord, what happened? What happened? Is this all an empty space? Are you saying there are no operations or spiritual activities here that men, mortal men, can enter comfortably and do what they want and grow? You still here. You will wait for me till I come. You will hang with what you have stolen till I come. I made it for a few years. There you go. No witch, no evil bird can fly over my roof. You try it, you fall down and die. This is le- You become a legislator on the airframe. Making decrees on behalf of God. Let the nations feel that the children of God on the earth again. Rise up to your feet, pray one prayer. And I'll give you five points and we are done with this service. Are you ready for this morning? Listen, listen. I know of one man called Reverend Umar Okpa. If that man opens his mouth to say over your life that you are blessed, I swear on that God, money will start looking for you. What a presence. What a level of a confidence. How can a man be so influential spiritually to control the finances of men? A young man walked up to him. Sir, I am struggling. I'm the poorest in my village. I have served nine of my brothers. All of them have done um, um, houseboy for them. Sir, I don't want to end like this. And he said, in 13 years' time, you will be the richest man in the Southeast. One little statement. But there are presence that follows those words. After 13 years, the man is a senator. I think Senator Kachi came to him and said, Sir, you said this thing 13 years ago. I served 10 of my brothers as houseboys. And I came to you crying. You said, in 13 years' time, I will be the richest in the Southeast. Sir, God has answered your prayers and gave him 13 billion. That's the power of the anointing. It can put food on your table. That's why I like the anointing. You don't need any man to put you on a salary. That's why I vowed I don't want to be paid. So that I will be so challenged and not be entitled to it that I must see results in the lives of me compel them to want to give to me. The power of an inflexing presence. Can you enter into an atmosphere? Atmosphere change. That's what I came to talk about. You know why? Talk is too cheap. When you carry the influencing presence, you talk less. Your presence does it. That's, see, and you know one thing about the world? The world is so sensitive enough to study a man who has an influencing presence. I have very smart people around me. Very, they know. Sometimes they know when the anointing has switched. There is a change of wine on my life. They are very sensitive to it. They know. Are we together? Kakotila Hashai. 
Ageka Koti Lida Hasadi. It's in you. And if you don't have it, it comes upon you in this meeting. But the influence of it. The influence of it. You are into agriculture. You can make the land born again. I taught you right. That we have born humans. But we have not born things. Whatsoever. He didn't say some things. Whatsoever is born. Born that land of God. And say oh you farm. I superimpose the supernatural power of God. Produce yield beyond the operations of natural cause. Time will fail me to tell you of so many encounters and stories. One time in the ministry, I told them, and then I said, we needed money desperately in that period. I said, count money. Then I just read the book, like a mighty wind, Meltari. And I saw the wonders of the New Testament there. I was challenged. I told her, I said, count the money. She counted the money. She told me how much it is. I said, go count it again. She counted it, the money doubled. I said, go count it. And she kept counting till we got the exact amount we needed. Are you not people saying, I'm seeing money, I don't know where they kept it? It's not something we are trying to attempt. These are things we have left for you because we are looking for something higher. We are looking to call dead people back to life, to kill at a, at a statement, to kill HIV by this for you to start from there we've touched it 10 years ago I'm blessed this morning the influence of your presence the influence imagine every one of us here carries an influential presence do you think this environment will be normal do you think it will be normal I want to hear people do what I can do without waiting for me. Are we together? Without. How a man can end death by statement without screaming or shouting. I'll just stand on the altar. Almost all the fellowship that period have done different type of videos. They cried to the God of the heavens. And I said, don't worry. I'm traveling now. I need to go for a meeting in Ondo State there. But when I come back, I'll put a stop to this. But before I come, the three days of your prayer program, day one, somebody will die. Day two, somebody will die. Day three, I just heard it. I was there. They were giving me information. Day one, day two, day three. When I came, just in a service, I stood like this. And I said, I intentionally kept quiet because somebody offended me anyway. So I intentionally kept quiet. You know, some people don't know their grace mate because everybody wear the same costume. So I kept it quiet. And I stood here and I said, okay, I'm speaking now. It ends now. That was the last day. Are we following the power of an influencing presence? Because, listen, once your presence or the presence of the Holy Spirit in the inside of you is not influencing, what is externally will be influencing you. That's the pain. What is happening externally will be influencing you. Do you understand that? I counsel people. There was a period this thing visited this camp. What do you call this thing? Apollo. That your eyes will be like you took beer. I'll sit in services then. My children will be so protective of me. Papa, go and beat this. I say, ah, ah. Then what did I finish preaching on the pulpit? If I should be scared of this thing. I should... Did you hear what the Bible says? And when he came before the grave of Lazarus, the Bible says he sighed. The word there means he threatened death. It's like telling death, do you know who is standing before you? There are you need to exert your spiritual authority as such. Conscious, you know, I said, ah, I just finished preaching. People fell down under the anointing. I shall be scared that they should stand in front of me to talk. No, now. That is Christianity that is not real. Sit down, let's do this. Number one, how do you carry an influence in presence and how do you sustain it? Number one, give God time. Give God time. They say you can be a worker in church and be detached from Christ. Are we getting blessed? Give God time. 
Mark 1 35 to 37. The Bible says, as his custom was before the dawning of a day, Jesus go to the solitary place to pray, to spend time with God. When you stay where they keep he goats overnight, when you come out in the morning, should we ask you where you're coming from? What will you start smelling? That's how it is. They took notice of them that they had been with Christ. Luke 21, 37 to 38. The Bible says, and day after day, the Bible says Jesus was speaking in the temple, but at night, he goes to the solitude place to pray the Mount of Olives. Psalm 91 and verse 1 said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall carry the Shaddai power. The word Shaddai means almighty, overshadowing power. And Psalm 34 and verse 5 said that they looked up to him and their eyes were radiant. It was a kind of influence on them. And Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. See, and they took notice of them that they had been with Christ. So one of the things you must practice is to give God time. Are we following? I read a story of a great woman of God, Catherine Coleman. She spends hours with the Lord daily. 16 hours. Give God time. I've taught us when the Bible says pray without ceasing. I've tried to explain to us what it is. Because sometimes you can see me in the way not praying like you thought. But praying without ceasing simply means, you know, prayer or the operations of humans to divinity operates from two realms. From the realms of words and from the realms of what? Thoughts. That's why Ephesians 3.20 says that he can do exceedingly far above what we ask or we what? Think. In fact, more powerful than the realms of words are the realms of thoughts. I've told us that the realms of words control the angelic. The realms of thoughts controls the God realm. Because the realm of God is not the realm of the angelic. The realm of the angelic is called the everlasting realm. Simply means they have a beginning, but they don't have an end. The realm of God is called the eternal realm. God has what? No beginning, no end. That's why the angel said to Daniel, the first time you set your heart to pray, it was in your mind. Your prayers was hard, but I am come for your words. That's why the Bible now advised us that whatsoever thing is true, Philippians 4 8, whatsoever thing is noble, whatsoever thing is of good report, is worthy of praise, put your attention on those things. Do we understand that? Because nothing is new under where the sun. It must first exist in another realm for it to obey the law of scripture. And most of the times it's the realm of what? Your thought. So when the Bible says pray without ceasing, it simply means that even my thought is a prayer. Have you know sometimes you are thinking about somebody, they start calling you? It's a powerful signal in the spiritual realm. So when you don't see, maybe me physically praying, ah, bah, 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 bah. just know in my mind. If, I, if you come around my atmosphere, you know you see music 24 hours. I'm a man of sound. 24-7, I'm sleeping, I'm waking, I'm moving anywhere. That's my life. Because it helps me to pick the slightest of spiritual signals. Do we understand that? So you must give God time. Embrace what we call the gift of time. You are washing clothes that will take you two hours. And you are just him. You can use that period. Pull me a little closer. Take me a little deeper. You are marinating yourself. Do we understand that? You know, we call marination. I know ladies, we know it more. When you carry chicken, you buy chicken, you put all the ingredients and leave it to soak. Right? It should end time to it very well. So when you taste it, you don't taste the taste of the chicken. You taste the taste of the ingredient, the spices there. That's what we call marination. Do we understand that? Give God what? This is one of the biggest secrets to carry the tangibility of God's presence. Give him time. Let your mind be stayed on him. You are walking, whether you catch me on bike, catch me walking, even those that walk with me, you can see them talking, I'll respond. The next thing is, Shahati ka ka pa ya tula. It's there. Do we understand that? It's there. 24-7. You keep yourself in that cloud. Give God time. 
you can't if you are too busy so that you don't have much time for God you are too busy that he wants you to be so that you will smell like him how do you want to operate the way I'm talking about now and the last time God saw you is last year crossover night I'm telling you some of you are sitting here that's the last time you say you sat down with him and you're just praying when you are here when you are here when you are here do you know i saw i saw i saw somebody sharing a very powerful secret you call them levitical truths and i was like ah, let me show it to these young people but i know they will not even grab it and i'll still say it here. i know some of you will not even still understand what i say it's called in proverbs i thought time is the proverb 4 13 there about it's called the vow of silence what leaks out power when men speaks listen to me when men speaks spirit follows their words so when you talk so much you release so much of it that's why if you want to in some crazy that i said well who was teaching that i think it was lawrence oh yeah he was saying it i was like ah you shouldn't have said it maybe some of you saw it online telling the young people he said how you can stay three days you play just music in your background without a word three days just do what you are doing don't make any statement don't talk to anyone no phone nothing just stay in the atmosphere after three days come out and shout i am full of power i swear that god you open a blind eye but the problem there's even as i taught you now will you be sleeping like that all the time you have to just stay like that every do you understand that I'm full of power. If you ask those that must when I come around and I say I want to miss, I don't pray here. They mean I've come about mm -mm. you just see me put some sounds in the office, right? And I tell them I want to prepare for a meeting. <laughs> and they see I lie down and I put sounds and I begin to align my thoughts. Because the doorway to the spirit is your mind. School of ministry will teach you that. Is that okay? Because understanding the ways of God makes you operate in the miraculous so cheaply so cheaply number two give God time do things that keeps you in the influence of God's spirit every day Ephesians 5 and verse 15 to 21 give me that scripture not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil so one of the redemption you must fight for is the redemption of all time next verse wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding the will of the Lord is. So it simply means the redeem the time is when you understand what the will of God is. An absence of understanding the will of God is a waste of time. Because you'll be doing other things till the day you find his will. Are we following? He said, and be not drunk with wine wearing in excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourself in Psalms and hymns spiritual song songs without words speaking to yourself they didn't say to somebody else you are walking on the way that's why somebody can call us at any time and say this is happening and I say settled and it answers you know why? Because the spirit is more active. Listen, you will struggle. How many of you have listened to my message on tongue geology? The mystery of tongues. Tongue geology. I think I thought part one and two. I tried to explain to us the mystery of tongues is the combination of the mystery of Babel, the scattering of language to Act chapter two when languages were coming together again. But just get the message. My emphasis there is the dominion mandate of God was given to the spirit of a man, not to the flesh of the man. Oh, he formed man he had already said to the man he created as a spirit go and have dominion not the physical part of it so where if the that's why you want to go and see your lecture i'm telling you enter i can't resist your words you are too fleshy you enter example ask those around me something is missing i must see it Ask them. Sometimes they will even come intentionally. Say, let's step up and you will see it. And what will I just do? It's missing. 
Holy Ghost and the God inside of me get that message I've thought on that the God inside of me like a thought check there and I'll, they'll see there and sometimes he doesn't tell me that I move by that prayer into formative prophecy I told us what is formative prophecy right you call things that be not as though they were I say check there so the angel will go pick it wherever it was and keep it there do we understand what I'm saying don't be too fleshy you want to get money from your uncle after you have discussed back bite front bite center bite then you carry your phone and call him the next year is he just cuts don't come this number again you're too fleshy before you call him sometimes you hear me even say i switch into my divinity that's what jesus did when they wanted to throw him through the cliff of the mountain he switched into his divinity and men cannot hold spirit so the bible says he passed through them he was entering the bodies of men are we together so that your spirit the dominion mandate will come alive from your spirit don't do things out of flesh do you know your spirit is called your intuition anything you remember at 90 years you can remember it that when you were small you did this how will you not all and be stranded pray in the holy ghost I wish, I wish we know what we have. I shared a course we wrote in chemical engineering while I was around 500 level optimization, something like that, if I can still remember. It was calculation courses. I made so much of mistakes and I could not finish my question. I left the hall and as my custom is, I pray for people so that you can't express me, expect me to be expressing sadness. So my friends came, stand guy, this course, hey, this... I said, no, I, I bless God. I bless God. Like my daughter will say, it's fine. It's fine. It's not a problem. <laughs> it's not now. That's been my custom. And I went and I said, Lord, Holy Ghost, send your angels. I got that mystery from Daniel. How that the Bible told us there was a hand that wrote on the wall. So I knew God could write. I saw it where Jesus was writing on the tablets of stones on the ground. So I said, Holy Ghost, every question I made a mistake, correct it. And the ones I could not answer, answer it completely. I'm telling you what we call the experiential knowledge of God. I was privileged to be compiling. My lecturer called me then, say, Come and sort out, because some people had missing results. And I saw my script. I had 51 over 60 exams. The mistakes I made, not in vision, I saw it with my physical eyes, corrected. A question I didn't attempt was perfectly written for me. The problem is that your mind can't carry what I'm saying now. Because your Christianity is just come to church, they pray, shout hallelujah, you go home. Number what are we, please? Let's end this conference. Are we blessed already? Yes, sir. Last day of our conference. Number three, culture and atmosphere of joy. Isaiah 12 and verse 3. Isaiah 12, 3, Zephaniah 3, 17. Isaiah 12, 3 says that with joy, therefore with joy shall we draw waters. From what? The, from shall we draw what water out of the wells of sap? You cannot catch me frowning, no matter the situation. You can't. Frowning is not a spirit, fruit of the spirit. And if I will do anything that has to do with helping you, it has to be by the spirit. So I must force that atmosphere. Any small thing you have, you are bone face, well, and you are happy. There is no battle that has hit me. Everyone around me knows me. You just see me keep smiling and happy. Culture, joy. It allows the influence of the Spirit to be mighty upon you. Do we understand that? Rise up to your feet. Can I give you one more? And we are done this morning. Operate in love. Ephesians 3 and verse 19. Operate in love. Do away with bitterness, unforgiveness, and offense. Do away with it. They puncture the Holy Ghost in the inside of you. You can't be claiming you have the Holy Spirit and be behaving like evil spirit to people. Do you understand that? No, let your Christianity be real. Let it match in your character. How can you, as I find it difficult to forgive. My friend, you are not born again. 
something. No wonder when, when, when you are coming to give your life to God, you're not chopping. And tell your friend, you might come out. You show. Both just give up. So I find it difficult to forgive. Me, I find it difficult to be angry. If you know what I've been through in the hands of people they call human beings. <laughs> There are times I will go to God and say, God, did you see humans? He will laugh me and now say, Go and read Jeremiah. I already said it there. Woe unto him. <laughs> so, so, why are you telling me about the people I create? <laughs> Even God, you say, I know them. But I can't. Do away with bitterness. Submit ourselves, Ephesians 3, 3 521. 521. All right. Love is what brings us together hardness of our bitterness is what causes division separation he said submitting yourselves one to another after you have singing psalms you sing in him the next thing you do is to submit yourself one in the fear of the lord i won't hold any how can you two of you be in the same church you are not talking to john you are not born again you are not i didn't come here to look for members so i will tell you the truth you are keeping malice you are not born again you are if your Christian experiences cannot be adjusted your, your character rather cannot be adjusted by your Christian experiences then your Christian experiences is questionable it will do something to you now how can you still be looking the same way before you give your life to Christ and after you give your life to Christ the same thing, no change something is wrong do we understand Submit yourself one to another. Submit yourself. And finally, pray as often as you can in the Holy Ghost. Jude one twenty. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I told you what it's doing. It is bringing your spirit more out to overdo, over, overcome the flesh. And when you speak to men, you speak to them as spirits. I've taught you some crazy secrets. Crisis, you want money from somebody, pray in the Holy Ghost for paradika totata leta kata. Then ask that you will be shocked, they will be compelled to give to you. The power of an influencing rise up to your feet of an influencing presence. The Bible says that the great man, the apostle Peter, carried so much of this presence that men could put the their sick for the shadow of Peter to drop on them they got so much to a point they could trust the shadow of a man listen we are in the days you know my job in the body of Christ is also to errat a season and a movement when you see me errat a season give it the next seven days you see people talking about it fathers talking about it when I errat this season we are getting into some crazy dimensions of the supernatural thank you where we will see more miracles done unconsciously than consciously you just come 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 you shake a brother and he said something entered me one time i was i went somewhere i just finished praying for long hours and i shaked a man a pastor he said prayer entered me prayer entered me the kind of level we are getting to where you go to a barbing salon the chair you sit after they barb your hair somebody come there that smokes Igbo sit down that chair he says something is happening to me see your clipper off it the off clipper is ah, ah. something is boiling in the side of me you don't know who you are you don't know Do we understand that? Now, one of the things that controls the influencing presence, which we call the glory realm, is words. What did I say? Spoken words. You wake up each morning, you say, Today, the hearts of men are touched to do me good. You are influencing, you are creating an influence. You are what we call, you are programming your atmosphere. Is that not so? To make it look like what you you are programmed i thought that message atmospheric programming you can get that message how you can program your atmosphere lift up your hands everywhere 
Hakato Zilita Hakata Shkitela. My job this morning is to pray for you. I don't know the hunger via which you came to the meeting today. But all I know is that in this day, in this time, in this generation, God is raising men. I want you to go back and change things. Don't live like, I'm, like a defeated person again. He say you die like mere men. There are things that happens to mere men that shouldn't happen to you as a Christian. Are we following? The power of an influencing presence. Influencing presence. Influencing presence. Lift up your hands and pray. Just to pray and then I'll profess. The meeting is over. Have we enjoyed the conference from Friday thus far? Are we sure? Seeing my candle. How many of you want a special grace from God this morning? You want a special grace. <laughs> my son, one of my son, I think him, he went to a meeting, then he came back to me and said, Sir, there was something somebody said in the meeting. I think the person in the meeting was my son. He said, Grace is a person. So he was trying to comprehend it, and I laughed. Because I know he was trying to understand what the person meant. But it simply means that the grace you are looking for is in somebody's hand. What you want there is somebody that already has it. So when that person appears, what you are looking for has appeared. Yes. Yeah. And let me teach you something. When you see the tangibility of an anointing of it, an atmosphere, right? especially when the minister of God is ministering and you see the move of the spirit even if you are not getting slain in the spirit begin to breathe that atmosphere because the realities that causes those things to take place and move, especially when the man comes close to you there is an angel standing there breathe in that atmosphere I'm telling you in few you see that you start walking in what is doing I'm telling teaching you how he broke into you must have knowledge of the ways of this God. Lift up your hands. Thou fire of God. That's what we are asking for this morning. That fire of God. That you will not be a defeated foe again. You will not. Listen. I teach you this finally. I have taught you what I want to teach you on how to sustain the anointing. I am teaching you how to operate it. I said number one, release words. Number two, master prophetic acts. That's the strength of herbalists. That's the strength of native doctors. Prophetic acts. Giving a formation, a semblance of what you want to see happening in the spiritual realm. Doing it in the physical. That's why the fastest way for me to make a woman get pregnant is I tell her, give me fruit. Because what she's looking for is the fruit of the womb. And I speak the reality of the heavens over it. And I say, take. You know why? Because some people's head reject prayers. People, you are praying on his, their bodies. is not collecting it. That's why sometimes we put it on substance and ask them to take. That's how our bodies to do. Are we together? They look for a crazy presentation of it. You have an auntie that is buried. Hold the picture and say, auntie, I command your womb to open. You are looking for American Christianity. So Lord, we say that they be this. I'm teaching what even the fathers you know do behind the scene. I've had privileges to see what your eyes won't see on the prophetic acts. Lift up your hands and pray this prayer finally. And say, Lord, the deposit of your power. Just one prayer and we are done this morning. Then I pray for us and release the spirit upon us. A deposit of your power. Are we ready? I'd like for your hunger to be intact. Now is the time. Two minutes from now, the anointing of the Holy Ghost will break loose upon this house. Give me your fire. Paratika kopela shkata anointing might come in a dimension of a wisdom it might come in a dimension of the overflow of financial abundance it's an anointing 
but what matters is that it will answer a cry in this generation i don't want to live a wasted life i don't want to be a christian with no testimonial when the generals of faith will be sharing their stories in heaven i don't want to be a spectator listening what are my trophies for this kingdom what are my trophies for god Lord, I cannot look, get loose upon this house. I break my oil upon this house right now. I pray, Papa, as you believe this. Let the heavens be open. Oh, Papa, Lord, you get a rush. Papa, this, take 